Mr. President, I want to spend a few minutes with the United States Senate today and the American people to talk to them about this great body that we serve in. I know that there are all kinds of pundits and commentators who talk about how the system is broken. They point to what's been going on in Washington the last few months as saying it shows that uh, we need a complete change in the way we enact laws. It just doesn't work anymore. It's terrible, awful what's been going on. Mr. President, I want to take just a few minutes and historically review what our country is all about. In the summer of 1787, the Founding Fathers meeting in Philadelphia were having a very difficult time. They had had a number of um, ways that it tried in the past to keep the country together. They had the Articles of Confederation, and they knew that it just wasn't, wasn't appropriate. It wasn't working. And in, in June of 1787, a, a delegate from Connecticut made the, made, came to the conclusion that he had an idea how he might be able to suggest to the other members of the delegation, the Founding Fathers, come up with a constitution. That's what they, why were they there? And his suggestion was really full of merit because they had not been able to solve the problem of the great state of New York, huge in area, and millions of people, and the little state of Connecticut, very small in area, and just a few people. How could those two states be together in the same union? They had already decided they were going to have three separate branches of government. But the problems they had in Philadelphia, those many years ago, was how to handle the legislative branch of government. And the delegate from Connecticut came up with the idea. It was called the Great Compromise. And his suggestion was now that became part of our Constitution, allowed the Constitution to become the real thing. His suggestion was, we're going to have one body of the legislature, the House of Representatives, that would be elected every two years, somebody died or resigns over there, there would have to be election. No one in the history of our country who has ever served in the House of Representatives has gotten there other than by having been elected by the members, their constituents from their district. The Senate, however, would be not representative of how many people were in the state. Each state got the same number. That was the breakthrough. And it was, a, it was, a, it was an experiment, but a noble experiment. And it's worked so well over all these many years where you have the legislative branch of government consisting of two separate bodies, bicameral in nature, and there's been conflict. The Founding Fathers built into the legislative branch of government purposely conflict because they believed that that would be enough to offset the power of the judicial and legislative branch of government, the judicial and executive branch of government. Over the years, things have been much worse than they have been in Washington in the last three months. Our country has been uh, so successful as a result of the Constitution that guides us. And I repeat, the Constitution has been so successful because of the great compromise of the legislative branch of government. In the early days of our um, country, there was conflict that went on all the time. They were from the very beginning, can this great country survive? And then we had the conflicts that developed in, prior to the Civil War. One congressman, um, uh, and Senator Henry Clay from Kentucky. He was known as the Great Compromiser. He worked for generations, plural, to see what he could do to stop the dissolution of the Republic. And he was successful. Difficult, oh, they had very difficult times. Uh, one member of uh, the House of Representatives was enraged because Charles Sumner was anti-slavery, and he was a fine extemporary speaker, and he was so able to express himself. Um, Congressman Brooks came to the floor, came to the Senate with his cane and beat Senator Sumner, beat him with his cane. Senator Sumner never really recovered. He was out work, off work for a couple of years and had permanent disability as a result of that beating he took on the Senate floor. Historic battles have taken place in our country, uh, where they talked, where they were much more difficult than what we've just gone through. What we've just gone through has been extremely difficult. 
but there was never any consider consideration that the republic would fall. Uh, in recent years, the civil rights disputes. Mr. President, the Congress reacted to the slavery, uh, the, the, I'm sorry, the, the uh, times that came after the dissolution of slavery. The civil rights movement, with all the dispute that took place right here in the Senate floor, was very, very heated. Uh, filibusters took place that lasted for weeks, not days, weeks. There was tremendous acrimony as a result of that the issue dealing with um, civil rights. But we worked through that. We worked through that. It was hard, and Congress was broken. The Congress is not broken. The Congress works the way that it should. Now, does that mean it's always very pleasant, happy place? No. And do I wish it weren't this is as uh, difficult as it has been the last few months? I wish it were much better than that. But that's where we are. But through all the years, through all the conflicts we've had, we've been able to come together and reach reasonable, a reasonable, reasonable conclusion. The great experiment that started in 1787 has been very successful. A number of people have identified our system of government here, but I guess the best way today to talk about it is what Winston Churchill said about democracy. Here's what he said. It has been said that democracy is the worst form of government except for all others that have been tried. I, Mr. President, am not proud of the conflict we've had uh, these last many months, but I'm satisfied that we have been able to come together to find a solution. Now, it's, it's not over until both houses of Congress pass the legislation dealing with the debt crisis we have in America. It's not over until the President signs that bill. But after weeks of facing off against each other, this partisan divide we have here in the Senate, we were finally able to break through with an agreement. An agreement it is typical for agreements that are difficult. No one got what they wanted. Everyone had to give something up. People on the right are upset. People on the left are upset. People in the middle are upset. It was a compromise. It's not always easy for two sides to reach consensus, but that's what we did. We did it on a bipartisan basis. So I believe that reasonable Republicans and Democrats alike understood in this case Without compromise, our country faced a very, very difficult situation. But we did send, Mr. President, to the world and to the American people that our great democracy is working. As difficult and as hard as it is, it works. So I look forward to working with my colleagues uh, in the next uh, few days, on both sides of the aisle, to pass this remarkable agreement, which will protect the long-term health of our economy and avert a default our nation's debt. We still have a lot of problems dealing with our debt, but this was a great stride forward. Today, Congress has a unique opportunity and responsibility to show the world that we can achieve, not in spite of our divided government, but because of it.